All right, one of the very first battles of the Second World War was a short but vicious battle that took place in the building right behind me here in the Polish city of Gdansk, back then known as the Free City of Danzig. Here, Polish defenders against the German invaders stood firm during the Polish defense of the post office in Danzig. A forgotten battle of the Second World War, stay tuned. After the First World War, the Polish nation was reborn. It was known as the Second Polish Republic. It was basically carved out of the former Russian and German Empire. These empires, at the end of the 18th century, had annexed the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. But now Poland was back. Poland was also granted access to the sea. And this was all written in the 14 points plan drafted by American President Woodrow Wilson. The Polish corridor gave Poland access to the sea. Now, what about the Polish-German city of Gdansk Danzig? Danzig, as it was known back then, was founded by the Poles. But by now, inhabited by mostly Germans. This city and its surrounding area became known as the Free City of Danzig. And it basically didn't belong to Germany nor to Poland. However, Poland did control several affairs in this free city. The Poles also run this post office that basically became an extraterritorial Polish property. Now as the Nazis gained power in Germany, they also did here in Danzig. And the Polish minority was discriminated by the German majority. And the territories like Western Platte and this post office basically became Polish outpost. In 1939, the SS Heimwehr Danzig was established and this army formation would help the Germans during their invasion of Poland in 1939. After the Gliwitz incident, in which the Germans created a Casus Belli for attacking Poland, at dawn on the 1st of September 1939, the German battleship Schleswig Holstein opened fire on Western Platte. The Polish post office, which was a symbol for the Polish state and an eyesore for the Germans, was attacked that same morning. The Poles had anticipated an attack, and combat engineer Reserve Lieutenant Konrad Gudeski had been sent to strengthen the building's defenses, while army reservists and militiamen had been transferred in to serve as postal staff. At the moment of the attack, 58 Polish people, equipped with rifles, machine guns, and several crates of hand grenades, were inside the building. And in case of an attack, their plan was to hold out for six army, because then the Polish army would arrive. Except, this army never came. The attacking force was a combination force which consisted of the SS Heimwehr Danzig as well as SA troops and German troops. Turned out that they had underestimated their opponent. They launched a frontal assault as well as attacking from the rear, but this failed. Later they brought in two armored cars and three pieces of artillery, but still they achieved no success. And the Polish defenders, they reacted with machine gun fire constantly that this building was referred as a fire spewing mountain. As another SS veteran recalled, even shelling with a heavy howitzer of the Wehrmacht could not bring the defenders to surrender. The Poles defended their post office with extraordinary bravery. The German commander, police general Willy Betke, he ordered the evacuation of the surrounding buildings. Also, by now, more and more witnesses gathered here to watch the fighting and it was kind of getting embarrassing by now because it took the Germans so long to occupy a building what they believe would be a walk in the park. They informed the Polish defenders by loudspeakers that they had to surrender or else the building would be totally demolished. But the Poles weren't thinking of surrendering and most of them by now knew that they most likely would have been executed if they did so. Then the Germans used concentrated artillery fire and therefore the defenders were forced to retreat into the cellars. Then the Germans pumped petrol inside the basements and ignited it on fire by using a hand grenade. As one survivor recalled, Everything went up in flames and we in the cellar were suffocating with the gases. We decided because of the overwhelming German advantage to give ourselves up. 
when we cried out that we surrendered, the Germans ignored us and continued the attack. Polish officer director Dr. Jan Michon, he was already wounded and he went out waving a white handkerchief. Then one of the SS men shouted, down with you Polish dogs, and he was shot dead on the spot. Postmaster Yusef Wasik also tried to surrender and was shot as well. Five were killed outright, six would later die of their severe burns. Now some they tried to escape. I read different accounts about this. Some sources say that they all got recaptured and other sources say that few got out alive. In either way, those captured were all tried before a military court who deemed them as irregulars. 38 of them were subsequently executed by firing squads, among which the second in command, Alfons Plisikowski. Now inside Poland, this battle is fairly well known when it comes down to the Polish defensive war 1939. It's more of a story of David versus Goliath. However, in this occasion, Goliath won the battle. But still, the Polish defenders who were outnumbered and outgunned, they held out for an entire day. In 1979, a monument was erected to honor the defenders of the Polish post office. And later, it was also portrayed in the BBC series World on Fire. Now, if you want to know more about the German invasion of Poland and also about the Battle of Westerplatte, you can click right here for a video that I recorded on location. Now please consider becoming a patron because with your donations I can make trips like these and produce content like this. Leave a like, feel free to share, thanks for watching, do not forget to subscribe, I'll see you later.